What's up guys, Dr. Alex Tatum here. Today, we're gonna talk about the most common procedure that we perform when treating male fertility, barricasil repair. This is our third entry in a four-part series. If you haven't seen our other videos, I highly recommend checking those out. In our first video, we covered the basics of both male fertility and conception. In our second, we discussed some of the lifestyle modifications we recommend to men and covered some of the medications we use during treatment. And in our fourth and final video, next time, we'll discuss some of the procedures we use to find sperm. Links to each of these will be in the description down below. But today, it's all about varicocele repair. How do we do it and why? Now, if you like this sort of content, make sure to click the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. So let's kick things off with episode 11 of The Man Cave. So what is a varicocele? A varicocele is an enlargement of a set of veins that drain blood away from the testicle. They can exist around just one testicle or both. They're usually diagnosed on physical exam and are actually quite common. Research has shown that around 15% of men in the general population will have at least one varicocele when examined. This is important because varicoceles are a common cause of infertility in men. Out of every five men with varicoceles, it's estimated that at least one of them will develop discomfort or a fertility issue related to their varicocele. So why does this happen? There are a few theories, but the one that most experts believe has to do with heat. I often joke with my patients that, as guys, we do not have scrotums for cosmetic reasons. The scrotum is actually functional in nature and has been designed to hold the testicles outside the abdomen in order to keep them relatively cool. Ideal testicular function, which includes both testosterone and sperm production, requires them to be about two degrees centigrade cooler than the average core body temperature. When the temperature the testicles live in is elevated beyond this, they tend to not work so well. We see this frequently in men who use saunas or jacuzzis. The elevated temperatures that the testicles are exposed to in these environments have been proven to hurt sperm production, which is why they should be avoided by men seeking to get pregnant. We can also see sperm counts drop in men who get sick and have fevers related to their illness. The reason this issue of heat is significant when talking about varicoceles is because varicoceles can elevate the temperature of the testicles inside the scrotum. The dilated veins that make up the varicocele are holding more blood than they're supposed to. This makes sense. A bigger pipe is going to hold more fluid than a smaller one. But the blood inside of these veins is hotter than the normal operating temperatures of the scrotum. So having more of it immediately around the testicles can elevate their temperatures and compromise function. So why do these veins become dilated and how do we fix them? All organs need fresh, oxygenated blood from the heart. This blood travels through arteries, which are relatively high pressure, before the blood reaches its target organ and deposits its oxygen. This oxygen-poor blood is then transferred to the venous system, made up of individual veins, which then return the used blood to the heart and lungs so it can become replenished with oxygen. The venous system and the veins that it consists of are relatively low pressure. This means that blood returning from the lower extremities, like the legs or testicles, can have a hard time fighting gravity. Now normally, veins have built-in valves that prevent blood from going backwards away from the heart. The problem is, these valves are prone to failure. For example, people who spend much of their working days on their feet are at risk for these valves failing in the legs. When these valves fail, excess blood is held back by gravity, which leads to these veins swelling and enlarging. In the legs, these are known as varicose veins. They aren't necessarily attractive, but they typically aren't harmful. But this exact same process can happen in the testicles. And as we mentioned earlier, the excess heat that is caused by these dilated veins can affect testicular function of up to 20% of men that have them. And that's what a varicocele is. Now it's important to note that varicoceles are something men are either born with or are predisposed to developing later in life. It's not their fault or caused by anything they've physically done. So now that we understand what varicoceles are, this presents the question, how do we fix them? Typically varicoceles are fixed through a minimally invasive procedure known as varicocele repair. Remember, varicoceles are a dilation of a set of veins that drain blood away from the testicles through the spermatic cord, which is the large cylinder that connects the testicles to the abdomen. The spermatic cord contains the testicular artery and the vas deferens, also known as the sperm tube, in addition to these veins and some smaller structures known as lymphatics. These are veins that when dilated, radiate the extra heat directly to the testicle, but there are actually a second set of veins that drain the blood from the testicle as well. This second set travels around the outside of the scrotum and is known as the gubernacular veins. 
unlike the spermatic cord veins, the gubernacular veins actually radiate heat outside of the scrotum and not towards the testicle. So a varicocele repair is actually a procedure where we block the dilated varicocele veins in the spermatic cord and thereby force that blood to drain through these gubernacular veins. This lowers the temperature of the testicles and can improve testicular function in about 60 to 70% of men. Blocking these varicocele veins can be done a few different ways. In our practice, the most common way that we like to do this is through what's known as the microscopic approach. This is accomplished through a small opening in the skin in the groin area. This is where you might imagine a hernia repair being, or a little bit below that. There is no incision on the penis or the testicles. We then elevate the spermatic cord through this opening and examine it underneath a high-powered surgical microscope. This allows us to carefully visualize these dilated veins and block them off using small surgical ties. The cord is then returned to the skin opening, which is closed with dissolvable stitches and glue that the body absorbs as it heals. This procedure takes about 30 minutes to an hour per side, and men go home the same day. It's extremely safe with a very low chance of serious side effects. Most men are back at work after a few days and back to working out after about two weeks. It's worth noting that there are other ways to fix barrack seals. One way is to use a camera to block up these veins inside the abdomen. This is known as a laparoscopic approach, but patient outcomes tend to not be as good with this, so most fertility specialists like myself don't use it. One approach that we do sometimes use in our practice is varicocele embolization. Embolization is a way to block the varicose veins internally. Rather than being done by a microsurgeon like myself, this is an image-guided procedure performed by a doctor known as an interventional radiologist. In our practice, we typically recommend this approach for men who aren't candidates for the microscopic approach or men who are seeking varicocele repair for discomfort rather than fertility reasons. Lastly, it's important to note that there is no medicine or exercise that can fix a varicocele. So how long does it take for sperm numbers to improve after varicocele repair? Some men's sperm counts will improve by three to four months, while others may require six to seven. In our practice, we'll typically check around four months following surgery. If a man's counts have improved at four months, that is great, but it is not uncommon for some men to have the same or even slightly lower counts at this time. This should not be a cause of concern for couples. If that's the case, we just wait the full six to seven months following varicocele repair and repeat the sperm count then. Like I said earlier, varicocele repair will improve sperm counts in about 60 to 70% of men. But even if a man's sperm counts don't improve with varicocele repair, data shows that men who get their varicoceles repaired have a better chance of succeeding with later fertility treatments like IUI or IVF. So if you have low sperm counts and a varicocele, it is almost always better to get it fixed. So when would we not pursue varicocele repair? The two most common instances are, number one, if we don't think the varicoceles are causing a problem, or number two, when time is of the essence. Varicoceles won't cause fertility issues in about 80% of the men who have them. So if I meet a man who's getting his fertility checked and I find that he has varicoceles, but that he also has fantastic sperm counts, I'm much less likely to offer him a repair. There are some nuances and exceptions to this. Some of those exceptions include very young men with varicoceles who come to see me and want to potentially prevent issues many years later, and men who are found to have elevated sperm DNA fragmentation associated with varicoceles. But generally speaking, if it isn't broke, don't fix it. The other instance when we may not fix a varicocele is when we don't have time. Like we mentioned before, most men will need several months before their sperm counts improve following their procedure. Unfortunately, some couples may not have that time. If I meet a couple where the female partner is in her late 30s or older, chances are her egg count and quality are decreasing significantly month after month. So although fixing a varicocele may improve the man's sperm counts and quality after several months, the couple's overall fertility may be less because of those age-related changes on the female side. Often, we will refer those couples to pursue IUI or IVF as soon as possible rather than fix the man's varicoceles, but that really is a judgment call and has to be made on a case-by-case -case basis. So that is varicocele repair. I hope this offered some insight and understanding into what is the most common procedure that we perform when treating male fertility. It is effective, minimally invasive, and almost always the right answer when a man has both compromised fertility with dilated veins on exam. If you like this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. If you haven't checked out our other videos in this series where we cover almost everything you could wanna know about male fertility, make sure to give those a look. The links will be down in the description below. And if you yourself or a man you know is questioning their fertility, please reach out to us and make your appointment today. Call us at 877-362-2778 or visit our website at www.indymenshealth.com. Until next time, this is Dr. Alex Tatum, signing off. Thank you.